Hi everyone, this is the second part to the lecture on velocity and acceleration. Just a recap of where we are. We were thinking of a parameterized curve as, the, as giving the position of a particle at any given time. So we can see this particle moving along this path and there's velocity vector in yellow and the other vector is the acceleration vector. And what we know is is that the velocity vector points in the direction that the curve is moving in precisely at that instant. The acceleration vector is pointing in the direction of the change in the velocity vector. So how is the velocity vector changing? That's encoded by the acceleration vector. What's not entirely clear is what direction this acceleration vector is pointing in. For example, is it perpendicular to the velocity vector? It doesn't look like it. You know, it doesn't look like it. Maybe at some points it is, but in general, no, it's not. So can we break down the acceleration vector into a couple of component directions which are naturally associated with the curve? Clearly the tangential direction is one natural direction associated with the curve at a point, but what would be another direction associated with the curve, a very natural direction associated with the curve? And that's what we're going to get into in this part of the lecture and we're going to see how to break down the acceleration vector into these corresponding components which are natural to the curve itself, which are natural directions related to the curve. So let's see how we can do this. And it's basically in co it's, it's all right here. Tangential and normal vectors. So the tangent vector is a vector that we've already been dealing with so far. The tangent vector is, well, here when we write down tangent vector and normal vector, we are meaning unit tangent vector, unit normal vector. So these are vectors of length 1. So we're already used to dealing with the tangent vector. Tangent vector, general tangent vector is r prime of t, but if we divide by its length, then what we get is the unit tangent vector. In terms of um, thinking about this as a particle moving, r prime is given by v, so this unit tangent vector is given by the velocity vector divided by the speed. And so we often refer to this using these symbols, velocity with the arrow on top, that's the velocity vector, but without the arrow on top, this means the speed, because that's the scalar quantity. So the unit tangent vector is given by velocity divided by speed. So that's the vector that points in the direction of the tangent vector, or, or you know, it's, it is the tangent vector. It's a vector that is pointing in the direction that's tangent to the curve, which is also the same as the direction of the velocity vector. Um, but we've normalized it. We've divided it by its length. So that's the unit tangent vector. And so the idea is we've got, in terms of a picture, We've got, you know, our curve here, and at a particular point along the curve, we've got its unit tangent vector. Now, what else can we do with this? Well, I've written down here normal vector, and it's t prime over the length of t prime. So we might ask ourselves, what is t prime? How is it situated relative to t in space? Well, here's where we're going to call recall an important fact. t and t prime are orthogonal. Why? Well, we've already proven this. We proved it in section 13.2. I even referred to it in section 13.3 when we were doing a proof. But we'll do it again just to, to see why. Why? Well, it's really because the length of t is constant. The length of t is 1. So that means t dot t. t dot t is equal to 1. So then if I differentiate it with respect to t, little t, then that derivative is going to be 0. But when I differentiate this, I use the product rule, the dot product rule. So derivative of the first dot the second plus the first dot the derivative of the second. That's got to equal 0. But the dot product, it doesn't matter which order I do them in, it's the same thing. So this is really 2 times t prime dot t. 
So it's 2 times t prime dot t is equal to 0. And that means that t prime dot t is equal to 0. And that means that t prime is perpendicular to t. So that means if I compute my unit tangent vector at an arbitrary point corresponding to the parameter t, then I differentiate that vector. What I get is a vector that is perpendicular to it. So that's my t prime vector. And if I take that t prime, t prime vector, it may or may not be of unit length. So I normalize it. I divide by its length. That gives me what's called the normal vector. So now we have these two natural directions associated with a point on a parameterized curve. We've got the tangential direction and we've got the normal direction at that point to the curve. And so what can we do with that? Well, it turns out that those are precisely the directions that we need in order to talk about the acceleration. The acceleration has actually two components. There's a component of the acceleration that's tangential to the direction of motion, but there's also another component of the acceleration which is in the normal direction of motion. And these two components of acceleration in some sense are because of two different aspects of how the particle is moving along the curve. One is about if the particle is speeding up or slowing down as it moves along the curve. That's the tangential acceleration. So the tangential acceleration is in some sense related to the change in speed. But there's also another reason why you would get acceleration as you travel along the curve. Because the velocity vector is changing direction. It's not just that the velocity vector is changing length, it's that the velocity vector is changing directions. And that has to do with how the the, the curve is bending in space. And so that's the normal acceleration. So one acceleration has to do with the change in speed, the other acceleration has to do with the changing of the path you are traveling on, how it's bending. And that's why we would talk about the components of acceleration as it's tangential and it's normal, because they are coming from two different aspects about how the velocity vector is changing. The velocity vector can be changing due to its length changing or due to its direction change in some sense. So let's verify this result. I say that the acceleration vector can be split up into two components, one tangential and one normal. And the weight that's in front of the tangential vector, so remember t and n are both unit vectors, so there's a scalar that's going to be thrown in front of each of these. The one that's in front of t is v prime, so that's related to the change in speed. And the uh, constant in front of the n, the normal vector, is related to kappa and v squared. So it's related to curvature and the square of the velocity. And so that you can kind of think of this as if you're driving in a car down a highway and you go into a corner, and you're, take, you're taking a corner in your car, what is going to cause you to sort of shift in your seat from side to side in sort of the normal direction? Well, one is going to be how sharp that corner is, that's curvature, but another one is going to be how fast you are actually driving through that corner. If you are driving through the corner at top speed, like a really fast speed, then you're going to feel that normal acceleration. You're going to shift side to side in your seat. So speed has something to do with your normal acceleration, but also curvature, and that's what we're seeing here. So let's see why this is the case know, actually compute these values. So we'll start with our velocity vector. And that's given by speed times the tangent vector. And maybe we'll just make a note where the v without the arrow hat is the magnitude of the velocity. So, and that's it, that's speed. Okay, so we've got our velocity vector written down, and what we're interested in is the derivative of this, because that's the acceleration. So let's go ahead and differentiate it. Acceleration, that's the derivative of our velocity. We can use the product rule here. It's going to be the derivative of the first function, that's derivative of speed, times the tangent vector, plus 
the speed times the derivative of the tangent vector. And I will, well, I, I was going to say I'll leave those little t's off. Maybe I will put that in the next line. So I'm going to write this in the next line with, without the little t's, just for clarity. I want to focus our attention on the things that really matter. And so this is our acceleration. It's the rate of change in speed times the tangent vector plus the speed times the derivative of the tangent vector. So we can already see this first piece is it seems it seems to be true. I don't know if there's something else hidden in this this t prime that may contribute to the t as well, but we see that we've got one component here which is v prime times t and then we got this other component which is t prime. Now what is that other component? Well, t prime, what is it? Let's scroll up. From this equation here, we have that t prime is equal to the magnitude of t prime times t prime. Uh, sorry, times n. <laughs> My apologies. Sorry. Okay, so all I'm doing is taking this and multiplying it to the other side, essentially. So I'm solving for t prime, and I've got that is equal to n. Okay, so t prime is the magnitude of t prime times the normal vector. And so what that means is if I scroll down, I can rewrite that second piece as v times the magnitude of t prime times the normal vector. And then I can say, well, what is the magnitude of t prime? Well, I have this result that says curvature is the magnitude of t prime over the magnitude of r prime. But what is r prime? r prime is velocity. The magnitude of velocity is speed. So this is really the magnitude of t prime over speed. So that means that the magnitude of t prime is equal to curvature times speed. So I can use that to replace that quantity. And so then what we have is it acceleration is v prime t plus v times kappa v or kappa v squared times the normal, the unit normal. And so there is our acceleration. Our acceleration can be written into two, split up into two components. There's a tangential component, and that's the scalar, that's in front of that unit tangent vector, it's v prime, and there's a normal component, and that's the scalar, that's in front of the normal component. The tangential component depends on the rate of change in speed, whereas the normal component depends on the curvature and the square of your speed. So that's that fact, the components of acceleration written above. Now what more can we do with this? Well, we can actually, instead of working explicitly with trying to find speed and take its derivative, having to find the curvature and then the speed squared and multiplying them together, this next result says we can work out the tangential and the normal accelerations using the original function, r. And the tangential component is related to the dot product of r prime and r double prime, whereas the normal component is related to the cross product. Let's see why this is the case. So we've already got this result established from above. So there's our acceleration. And now what we'll do is we'll just dot with um, the velocity vector, which is speed times the tangent vector. And the reason I'm going to dot it with that is because I know t is perpendicular to n, because n is normal to, to the tangent vector. So when I do the dot product, I get rid of the n part of it. So what I'm doing is I'm going a dot v. So that is uh, v prime t plus kappa v squared n. And I'm dotting that with v times t, 
the dot product of that with that is equal to zero. The dot product of that with that is v v prime t dot t. What is t dot t? Well, t is a unit vector, so t dot t would be one. So this is v v prime, and that's a dot v. And now at this point, we can say, well, what is a? a is r double prime, v is r prime, and what is v, v dot? Well, v is the magnitude of r prime, and then we've got our v prime there. This is the thing we want to solve for. We want to know what is v prime, so let's go ahead and solve for that. v prime, which is, maybe I'll back it up here, the reason we want to solve for it is we're trying to find a sub t, the tangential acceleration, that is v prime. And that is equal to r double prime dot r prime all over the magnitude of r prime. And because the dot product's commutative, it didn't matter if I went r double prime dot r prime or r prime dot double r dot r double prime. We've just established this result here. So that is good. So there's a way to compute the tangential acceleration. What next? Well, now we want to do the normal acceleration. Well, a sub n, the normal acceleration, is curvature times v squared. And we can just use our results. We had a result about curvature. Curvature was r prime cross r double prime all over the magnitude of r prime cubed. So that's curvature. And then we are multiplying by v squared. But v is r prime, the magnitude of r prime. So that's squared. So that means I've got two of those up there. They cancel with two of them in the bottom, leaving us with only one in the bottom. And therefore, it's r prime cross r double prime all over the magnitude of r prime. And that just established the second formula. And so that's how we can compute the tangential and the normal accelerations. Let's go to our visual. So I said I've sketched in our acceleration vector there. But what I've also done, if we scroll down a little bit, is I've also constructed a vector which is take the tangent vector, a unit t is what I've called it here, so take the tangent vector and multiply it by the derivative of speed and then also take the unit normal vector and multiply it by the curvature times the um, the curvature times v squared and so if I turn that vector on I can see they're exactly the same so the green vector I constructed by using that formula for the acceleration vector in terms of its components. I'll draw the components in. There's our tangential and our normal component. So the red is our unit tangent vector, the purple is our unit normal vector. And you can see that the green vector, the acceleration vector, lives in the plane that's spanned by the vector t, which is the red vector, and the vector n, which is the purple vector. So then as we move along Actually, I'll do one better. I say it's in the plane spanned by them. Let's just draw the plane. So there's the plane that's made up of the tangent vector and the normal vector. So those two vectors form this plane. And now what we'll do is we'll drag our point along the curve. And we can see what's happening is the plane is changing because our tangent vector and our normal vectors are changing. The acceleration vector is always in that plane, though, because it's a linear combination of the tangent and the normal components. So this is how we start to visualize how to break down acceleration into components. We start to really understand motion in space using quantities like tangential direction, normal direction. And so one of the other aspects you're starting to see here is that not only, so I'm going backwards, now I'll go forward again, the uh, 
tangent vector, the red vector, pointing in the direction of the velocity, so I know which direction the particle is moving at any given point in time. The acceleration vector tells me how my velocity vector is changing, and that's going to live in this plane defined by the tangent and the normal. But I also have this, uh, this plane that contains both the velocity and the acceleration vector. I have that sort of moving in space. And one of the th ways to describe that plane is not just by the tangent and the normal vector that make it up, but by the cross product of those two, because that would be a normal to that. So I will draw that vector, and that's called this vector b. So if I drag it around, you can see I've got this vector b. And now I've got three natural directions associated with that point in space on this curve. And so whenever you're dealing with objects moving through space, this is a natural frame of reference to use. It's called the TNB frame of reference, or the Fresnay frame. And so if you're studying physics, you'll definitely be using the Fresnay frame when you study motion in space. And this is how it's constructed. It's properties related to the curve that you're dealing with, how the particle is moving. And so that's what we get. As we move through space, this is how our frame of reference starts to move. Now one of the interesting things is, is what is you know, curvature in, in, this, uh, in this space? Well, curvature has to do with some sort of bending of the curve. And we've seen how it comes up in connection with the normal acceleration. So curvature has some property to do with this normal acceleration or the, the normal vector in relation to the tangent vector and how these things are changing. But there's this, all, there's, there's this other thing that's changing as well. There's the way this plane is situated in space and how that orange vector is changing, how that orange vector is twisting as we go along the curve. And as that orange vector moves, that's sort of telling us how this plane is twisting in space. And so that's some sense a twisting measure of this curve. So we've got a bending measure, which is curvature, but there also seems to be a twisting measure as well. And that's known as torsion. And there's another concept that uh, we're not going to get into torsion, but that's, this is just if you're going to hear about it in physics, it's nice to know where it's coming from. And torsion is really about how this plane is twisting in space. It's how that orange vector is changing. All right, so let's go back to our constructs and now do a final example. What we're going to do is we're going to find the tangential and normal components for this particular function here. I'll scroll back up just so we can see it. We have these formulas that tell us how we can compute the tangential and normal components. So we need to know r prime, r double prime, and that's it. And then we put them together using dot products and cross products. So once I've got r prime, that's 1, 2, t, and 3, r double prime, which is 0, 2, and 0. We can go ahead and compute their dot product, and that's 4t. We can compute their cross product, and their cross product is going to be, I'll let you work out the details, but it turns out to be negative 6, 0, and 2. We need to know the lengths of these things. Uh, so the magnitude, and I mean, we look, scroll back up to the formula. It's just the dot product in the top, whereas a n is the magnitude. So I don't need to know anything more about the dot product. We got it there. But what we need is the magnitude of this one. So I need the magnitude of the cross product. And that magnitude is root 36 plus 4, or root 40, or 2 root 10. So the tangential component to the acceleration is r prime dot r double prime all over the magnitude of r prime. What's the magnitude of r prime? The magnitude of r prime of t is given by root 10 plus 4t squared. And so this becomes 4t over root 10 plus 4t squared. So there's our tangential acceleration or the tangential component of our acceleration, the normal component is given by this quantity, 
and that's 2 root 10 over square root of 10 plus 4t squared. One thing about the tangential is we can see, we use the dot product formula to get it, but we can see this is just the derivative of our, the magnitude of r prime of t, which is you know, v prime. So if we look up and see the magnitude of r prime of t and just differentiate it, we get the square root coming downstairs, um, and then we multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is 8t, but then there's a half because of the power rule that came down. So we get 4t over the square root of 10 plus 4t squared. So we can see it's just the derivative of the speed function, but we computed it using the dot product because we know that they'll give the same result. That was the, the nature of this last formula here that said we can use the dot product to compute the tangential acceleration. So that was our uh, another method for computing the tangential acceleration, or at least checking uh, what it is in this case. For the normal acceleration, this quantity that we just computed, it is the curvature times the, um, the, the speed squared. So it's kv squared. So this is curvature times the square of speed. So we could pull pull out of this the curvature if we wanted to. And that's not surprising because if we think back, that's really where this formula for the normal component was coming from. It came from the curvature. We used it as a part of producing that formula. So that's how we can get the tangential and normal components of the acceleration vector. So this tells us that for this particular curve, if we want to know how is it accelerating in the tangential direction, how is it accelerating in the normal direction, what are those two components, what one of the accelerations is due to the change in speed, the other acceleration is to due to the curvature, the speed you're traveling at and the curvature of the path you're traveling along. Those are broken down into these two pieces. All right, so that's it for this section. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time.